There are plenty of ways that people try to escape the sometimes underwhelming reality of everyday life. Going to the movies, visiting the local watering hole, or just sleeping until noon. But there's been a lot of buzz recently about the idea of actually immersing yourself in a virtual world with a virtual reality headset, such as the Oculus Rift or HTC Vive. But even though the concept of plugging a general purpose VR headset into a gaming PC is just starting to take off, people have been sticking their heads into virtual environments for quite some time all the way back to 1962, when the world was introduced to the Sensorama, a contraption that not only played 3D movies, but could tilt the viewer's seat and even simulate wind and different odors. A few years later, a headset called the Sword of Damocles came out. Man, they had better names back then. Rift? Vive? I want a Sword of Damocles. The name was because it was so heavy, though, that it had to be suspended from the ceiling. Although it could only display simple wireframe graphics, it was considered the first true VR headset. Virtual reality in video games didn't really start appearing until the 1980s, when we started seeing arcade games like Battlezone that used a periscope viewfinder to immerse players in the action, and 3D glasses that were available for consoles like the Sega Master System. 1995 brought us the Nintendo Virtual Boy, the first mass-marketed VR console, but although that one was marketed as being a totally immersive experience, its underwhelming monochrome graphics and difficulty of use made it one of the worst flops in Nintendo history. However, other companies were working on PC-compatible headsets during this time, and the evolution of technology over the years ultimately gave us the high-spec VR headsets of today. But then how do they work? Modern VR headsets show slightly different images to each of your eyes to fool your brain into thinking the 2D image on the screen is actually 3D. This principle is called stereoscopy and is actually similar to how the screen on a Nintendo 3DS works. To achieve a higher level of immersion, VR headsets use special lenses to increase the user's field of view, as well as pixels with very quick response times to reduce motion blur, meaning OLED screens have become popular for headsets, which you can learn more about here, by the way. Unlike a monitor, which can deliver a perfectly enjoyable gaming experience at 60 frames per second, headsets have higher refresh rates, typically around 90 hertz in the high quality ones today, which is important because lower frame rates, lower refresh rates, can be disorienting in a VR context and cause motion sickness. Not what you want after you've dropped several hundred bucks on a Rift or a Vive. Because, though, of the high frame rate requirement and the headset resolutions that are well beyond 1080p, a high-end PC system is basically a necessity. But beyond just graphics, VR headsets have sensors like gyroscopes and accelerometers to allow for head tracking, so that what you see will change depending on where you're looking. Some headsets, like the HTC Vive, even use separate external base stations and lasers to enable whole room tracking so the system can detect the motion of your hands as well. So as you can imagine, these headsets don't exactly come cheap. Fortunately, other lower-cost VR solutions are becoming increasingly popular, such as Google Cardboard, which isn't much more than a couple of lenses inside a cardboard box with a slot where you can insert a smartphone. Developers have already written quite a few apps for cardboard, making it a way to enjoy VR on the cheap if you don't have the coin for a gaming rig and a fancier headset. And although this new generation of VR headsets is just now hitting the market, there's already quite a bit of industry support, meaning that VR has the potential to really shake up how we experience games on both PCs and consoles. Maybe one day we'll even have VR Tech Quickie. I mean, after all, don't you want the experience of feeling like you're in the same room as me? Yeah, it's really not that exciting. Speaking of exciting, Squarespace. If you were thinking to yourself, gee, my website is really not exciting enough, 
Or maybe you were thinking to yourself, gee, my website is really not easy enough. Squarespace could be the solution to either of those problems. They've got a wide variety of beautiful, easy to use templates. They've got 24 seven tech support, by the way, over live chat and email to help you out. It starts at only $8 a month and all of their sites feature responsive design. So your website looks great, whether it's on a desktop, a phone, or wow, I wonder what it'd be like if you viewed it in VR. Okay, they probably haven't come to that yet, but uh, if anyone can do it, I'm sure it's Squarespace. You can start a trial with no credit card required and start building your website today, whether it's a portfolio or a blog or a, um, you know, informational site about your company or whatever the case may be. Try it out. It really is easy. Then when you decide to sign up for Squarespace, head over to squarespace.com slash Linus which is linked in the video description, and use offer code Linus to get 10% off your first purchase. Squarespace, you should. What should you do? I don't know, but you should do it. So thanks for watching, guys. If you liked this video, hit that like button. If you disliked it, well, you can hit the dislike button too. I guess that's okay. You can also leave a comment with suggestions for future videos. You can check out our other channels. They're really good, especially Channel Super Fun. We've got some great videos going on over there right now. And you can subscribe and follow and all that good stuff so you don't miss any Fastest Possibles just like this one.